boss talk one on one. One on one. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy E C E O, and I'm here with the lovely. Amazing, official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. My dad walk on. Hey man, it's good. It's good to be back in the in, in the place to be, right? Yes, sir. Hey man, we got a very very special guest today, man. This guy right here, man. I, hey man, his name came up, and I had to try to find him. My guy Steve Below is in the building. What's going on, man? Oh man, I'm here, man. Say, Bless. man, thank you for Bless. coming on the show today, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Man, so just to um uh, you from Dallas? Yeah. Yeah. Dallas originally. Yeah. I was born in Shreveport. What? But, uh, yeah. Cooper Road? Yeah, well, I, no, you I don't know where you're from. Street, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was born in LSU Hospital, though. Okay, okay. Yeah, because both of my parents are from a, a town called Nagadish. I know where Nagadish at. Yeah, that's like, yeah. like 45 minutes out of Streetport. Yeah, exactly. You exactly. ever go back down there? Oh, yeah. That's where most of my, my relatives are. And, uh, my immediate relatives. Really? Nagadish, like my, my grandmother, aunties. Really? Aunties, that food good cousins. down there, ain't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. Man. Yeah. So, yeah. so, Nagadish, so you was born in Streetport. From, how old was you when you came up to Dallas? I was an infant. You was, was an infant? Yeah, so you basically my parents were both here in Dallas. And then, you know, my mom was pregnant with me. Then she went to uh, Nagadish to stay with my grandmother while she was pregnant with me. And then she had me in Shreveport. And then my dad came to uh, came to uh, Louisiana and got both of us and brought wow. us back to Dallas. So I was I was been to all the schools here, elementary. So what I part of Dallas here. did you go to first? Pleasant Grove, man. To the Grove? Really? Grove, right right yeah. up the street? Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. It's Pleasant yeah. Grove, man. So how was did you go to where where'd you go to uh was it Brian Allen? Was it uh uh Samuel? Where'd you go to high school? W. W. Samuel, man. There it <laughs> is. Uh, w. W. Samuel from ninth grade to uh tenth grade and then I went to Lakeview Centennial my eleventh grade year and then came back to Samuel my senior year and, and finished out at Samuel. But uh as far as uh junior high I went to Florence, Fred L. Florence. Yeah. It's called something else now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh yeah. You but why the move? Why didn't you just stay at Samuel the whole time? No, no, he talking about his elementary. He went to the smaller school. Oh, okay. I yeah. thought he didn't go to Spruce. He didn't oh, go okay. over there. <laughs> but I think she was saying like because uh, you said you eleventh grade, right? Yeah, you left yeah. a little bit in high school. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm I don't listening. Know. I'm listening. All right, I'm going to back up. I wanted to just see something different, so mm-hmm. I went. I went to Lakeview Centennial. Had a cousin living out there. I so let me. I just wanted to switch schools. That's so the I, way. I went in and enrolled myself. <laughs> and, uh, I mean. Started going to Lakeview. My dad was like, you know, I came back. You know, first week of school, he said, "Hey, how's school going? How you liking Samuel this year?" I'm like, so I, don't, I ain't going to Samuel <laughs> no more. He's hey, like, what? I like that. I didn't know you can do that as a you child. You probably can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, we talking back in the the eighties. Mm. Yeah, so, I, you know. I went to uh, Lubbock. I, mm-hmm. I moved from East Texas to West Texas. Okay. I went just for some uh, uh, a semester mm-hmm. in West Texas. So I get it. Like you be wanting to know what else is going on yeah, out there. Yeah. Like when you're young, if you're an explorer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's, that's how I was. As soon as I got my license, man, I was I was all over the city. I would just I would get on six thirty five and just circle the city. And <laughs> I that's, did too. That's the way I learned it. You know. Are what I'm you saying? the youngest or oldest? Or oldest. Are you I got one younger sister. Oh, okay, wow. yeah. okay. So a lot of times she wanted to tag along. Nah. How nah. how much she's younger like is she? Nine years younger. Than oh, me. okay. Yeah. That's just like me and my brothers. I'm ten and twelve years younger than they are. So I oh, okay. always felt like an only child because oh, yeah. he was gone. Yeah. They were both gone. So I was just like, Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, I tell you, man, the, the the thing that uh uh I can say about Dallas, Texas, man, is uh it's the place to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody want to move here. Everybody frequently says, you know what? Let me move to Dallas. Uh, uh, California people love Texas. I love that. That, that everybody want to be here. The economy is great. If you're from up there, because they pay a dime for bags. Mm-hmm. I found that out the hard way. I went up there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plus, you know what they pay for in a house. You oh, know. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I'm just hey, $1 million dollars too. Mm-hmm. look like little shacks out here. Compared you know here, yeah, exactly, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So where did the name um, Below come from? That's not your legal name, is mm-hmm. it? It that's is? My, that's my last name, Below. Below. B-E-L-O-W. How yeah. many people spoil your name and say Below? How many people what? Spoil your name, like say Below instead of Below. You know what? A lot of people, most people, when they first pronounce it, it's, it's Bello. And then a lot of people say Bello. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of people ask me, well, how do you pronounce it? I'm like, 
Look, just as long as it's spelled right on my check, I don't care how you say it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Save because it. I yeah. never heard that name before. So a lot of time, so when I saw that name, I'm like, that must be his, like, he did that name. That's your name that you put on for stage name or something like that. I didn't expect that to be your real name. Yeah. Yeah, that's my that's, real name. That's a pretty cool name. Where yeah. did it originate from? Do you know? Louisiana. Really? Yeah. I think at one point it was uh, originally uh, B E. L L O, uh, which would probably be pronounced as Bayo mm -hmm. or something like that in French, because you know my dad's you know Creole her heritage, mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. all his people are from France. Like his his immediate, well his great grandmother and grandfather uh, was from France. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a lot of that French going on, and then some somehow down the line it, it got changed and it ended I want to say almost Bilo. everybody's names because I did a. Um, family um tree the other day creating yeah. it and you'd be surprised how many people the parents the great grandparents somebody spelled the name incorrectly and they just didn't go and fix it so all of a sudden now you have a totally different name that's spelled pronounced the same way but it's spelled differently right i'm like why won't you go and make sure it's properly spelled you know what yeah. i mean because when you're tracing back your, your heritage you need to have that proper spelling because just like your name, you said if it was spelled B E L L O, and you're going back to search back in France and so forth, it's hard to to really f know for sure is mm -hmm. that what it was. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I, so when you when you think about Dallas and uh, some of the things that's done happened here, um, I always ask all these questions. You know, as far as the music and the way the, the scene of Dallas feels, uh, what do you think? What do you? How do you feel about it? Where things are today? Where they are today, I think I think Dallas is at its um, is at a high at its highest level of potential more than it's ever been ever before. Wow! And uh, I I think it's like that because of the internet and how communication is so much more um, so much more uh, possible now. You know. I think back when I was coming up in the music game, uh, all we really had is you know the phone, and this city was this city is so spread out, you know what I'm saying. So if you don't have a car or something like that, it's just so hard to network, you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And I think now with the with the internet and things like Instagram and all of these social media sites, you know people from Dallas can see what other people are from from Dallas are doing. And they can get in touch with each other, you know, and start collaborating, you know, just like you and I. Yeah. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, uh, you know, he's he's a Leo. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Shout he's out he's Leo. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm he's loving it. I'm loving it. I mess mm -hmm. with him. He got he about to come back on the show, too. Yeah. He's doing his YouTube thing. He running. He on yeah. that. He out there trying to get it going. He said, I'm doing this YouTube. What's that? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. But y'all see what each other is doing. Yeah. right? So yeah. he, he knows he can reach out to you and vice Correct. versa. Vice versa. And then, you know, uh, when you were looking for me, he knew where to find me. Exactly. And, you know, it's just the communication. It's networking. It's, yeah, the networking I, possibilities are so much more broader now. Than what it used to be. Than what it used to be. Wow. And uh, I, think, I think the music is, I'm loving it. You know You're what I'm saying? I'm, I'm loving to see cats like Yellow Beezy and, and, you know, all of these other cats, you know, come up and, and really go out here and get, get deals. You know, I was, I was a fan of Mo3, you know, yeah, God yeah, rest his sure. soul, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, I really, I really hate to see how things went down, but you know, that's, that's over, oh, yeah. that's over my head, yeah. you know what yeah. I'm saying? But I, I really would have loved to be able to see, you know, them come together and do some stuff hey, and, and really take this city over the top, you know? I mean, you know, we're going to advance eventually, but you know, I, man, it, we was right there. We, we still, we I think, right there. I think but, we're going to come right back because yeah. there's another kid out there somewhere right now that's very talented. I don't oh, know yeah. who he is, but it's always, you know, time changes thing. You know that. Absolutely. And, and he, when he, when he pops up, it's going to, the, the red carpet is laid out for him because of the way that have been paved thus far. Yeah. What you're saying with it being at the scale that it is now, yeah. if, if a guy got some talent and he stepped into that, and I've seen some of these youngsters come through here. Oh, yeah. It's just a matter of time before it's one of them click. And when it does, it's going to be on because at the end of the day, the, the work has already been put in place. Absolutely. What do you think? 
Absolutely. That's pretty good, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. I think, you know, people put that work in. Yeah. Go ahead, babe. I have a question. Um, in the many years you've been in the music industry, have you ever seen, when you're talking about the Mo3 and the Yellow Bees and so forth, you know, you always have the beefs in between, you know, artists and so forth. Have there ever been a time where they say, you know what, let's just come together and just show unity? You know what I mean? Let, let, let's end this just to show that they're bigger to, to have an influence on the people who are watching. Has mm -hmm. any artist ever done that ever that you can recall? You mean like from Dallas or just in no, general? No, just from in general. Because just like you have your Tupac, your Biggie, you know, that never squashed. You know, you have all of the different artists that always had. I would know, say, beef. if I had to say, you want him to say or me? I Both. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. think Nas and Jay Z, uh, they that's, tried to do a, it. That's a great example. But but it was after everything had already been right. It was a later on. Right. Uh, I think Gucci and Jeezy, Jeezy had a hard to do it. But it was when you got bodies in the situation that we got loved ones have lost their lives, man, and you come in and you do a versus like they did. It's hard to put something together like that because there's so much tension. If you if I if you try to set me up. And my life was on the line, then I don't know how receptive I would be to yeah, coming back together after so many years. Yeah, I, it would it would be hard to get over something like that, <laughs> you know. I, I I understand. You've seen it, right? You've yeah, seen the yeah, verses. Like, like I mean, you think know, the world you, seen you it. sitting down, or you whatever, whatever, um, whatever Gucci situation was, you know what I'm saying? And you you sitting down, and these guys come in, and you know they. Your life is on the line now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. And you just blessed enough to make it up out of there. Man, you it know, was close. Yeah, you you don't know how that's going to affect, or you don't know what kind of effect that had on him. For well, you know it had it, it had a big you know effect on him. Yeah, yeah, think about it. Look yeah. at his look at his whole career. Yeah, and people don't realize that when that happened, he he was gone for like a year out of the music. Right. He didn't cut. He wasn't doing no music. I remember that. Yeah. He was hot right then when that song came on, mm -hmm. but then after that, he had to fight for his life. Yeah. So it had to, it it pulled back from his career. Now look at what happens after that. The the from from um, altercation after altercation, ice cream uh, uh, tattoo on his face. People you know people going in on him, but he still had good work ethic. Don't trip. He they were saying he was crazy. I remember all this when he's super talented. This dude's yeah. super talented. Yeah, uh, workhorse. Yeah. very uh, his work ethic is, can be denied. Yeah. And you know that that it's just you can't put something like that back together. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. It, it's hard. Then you say I want to put them together. I don't know who made that call. Think about that for a minute. Yeah. Hey man, I want y'all to do it versus you. It, it had to be some money involved or something because it yeah. seemed like a lot what, of tension. That's what overcomes a lot of things is yeah. the money. If they if it's enough money, they both will do it, which yeah. they did. So it was, I'm it glad was crazy. in the end they ultimately were able to be in the same space and at least hash it out you know what i'm saying um although you know you know went went the way it went you know still at the end of the day it ended peacefully right and yeah. i think you know there was there was at least some kind of uh some kind of dialogue yeah you know mm -hmm. that was started and you know both of them went their separate ways and, and was able to you know to move on but i think it was good for the culture yeah know? yeah yeah I, yeah i really do um i wish more people would do that because it set an example if you can be the bigger person. I know that your life is at risk and it's hard to trust people because you have to always wonder, are they doing it to set me up to that, like what y'all were talking about? But then it's a bigger picture. It, life is bigger than just us. Yeah, It's who you impact. You know what I mean? That's why when we started this and I've met so many musicians, before this, I didn't realize how powerful these mics are mm. and how powerful, because I'm not one of these people that listen to music and go out here and do whatever they're saying, but you do have a lot of people who do. That's, you know what I yeah. mean? That's, so, that's the thing. It's like, not, not, to, not to interrupt you, but no, go ahead. You, 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 know, you made me think about something. It's like, how do, we, how do we show these kids and sometimes even these adults that, you know, this, this is entertainment. Mm -hmm. So you take your, 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 your kid that's not raised in that kind of environment and then he, you know, he listens to the music, and you know, I, this whole thing about how music doesn't influence people's behavior. I think that's a that's that's the biggest joke ever. It it does. It has some kind of influence, one way. It just 
who's strong enough to look at music and, and, and the words in the music and be like, that's just entertainment. I know that I'm not supposed to go out there and do that, you know. Like take a middle class kid that's brought up in a in a situation where he don't have to go out and, and sell dope, you know what I'm saying? Uh but he looks at this looks at this lifestyle and hears his music and it becomes attractive to him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he and he goes out and, and does some of the things, not because that's what he could he he could possibly he could afford could, it and yeah, everything yeah, like that. Like he, he he's really not even cut from that cloth, but he wants people to view him in a certain light. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? He wants to be like the rappers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No. And he goes out and he and he commits whatever crimes or, or does whatever he, you know, he hears in the music and he sees on TV. He's not he wasn't strong enough or nobody was there to tell him like that's just entertainment. You know, if you go down that road, you know, there's likely going to be some consequences right and, and not explaining to him hey a lot of people that take that role either they were brought up in it or they just felt like they really didn't have a choice and you have a choice mm -hmm. so you know some saying? of the people that you've worked with um some of the bigger names that you've seen have you ever seen anyone come up to these people and said man you changed my life through your music yeah I, and I, who? I, i've never heard anybody say that to them per se but you can just kind of tell, tell like when people approach their them, energy right yeah the like energy. who who, who well like that? for one pimp c mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying uh just the love that i that i saw him get from people when when he was out and about it was just you know and and it was just always you when people saw him it was just like they were glad to see him you know what i'm saying and it just kind of felt like you could just see it in their eyes like they really didn't look at him as a celebrity even people that didn't know him like strangers they didn't look at him as a celebrity you know they would say hey what's up pimp you know they, they speak to him <laughs> like that you know i really never saw people that was like starstruck yeah you know because he had that ability both of them him and bun they had that ability to uh be the rap stars that they are but kind of be on that that level that that down to earth level, you know what I'm saying, to mm -hmm. the point to where you 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 feel like you can approach them that way, you know what I'm saying. Super dope dude, um, dudes, man. Uh, like I say, I met Bun. I didn't get to meet him, but I met Bun. Me and my wife and my mm -hmm. kids, all four of my kids, was with me in Vegas, yeah. and yeah. he stopped. I was like, my daughter wanted to take a picture with him, and she was like, Dad, I want to take a picture with him, and she was excited. And he was like, Oh, hold on, hold on. And he just pretty much took a picture with her, with all the kids, all four of my kids. I got pictures with all four of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> at, yeah. One at a time, I think. It was one at a time. But anyway, he was like, uh, you know, I was like, man, I appreciate the love and respect. And uh, uh, and I say, you dope. He said, no, you dope, man. You're the only one here that got your whole family with you. Right. You know, he he seen that oh, in the yeah, midst yeah. of what I was doing. Yeah. I was trying to show them business, really. Yeah. That I wanted them to see the mm -hmm. business side of what we do, you know. Yeah. And uh, you remember that day, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was just a dope, dope time, you know. Yeah. Um, but definitely, man, always been always looked up to those guys for what they brought to Texas for for the South. Yeah. Uh, them guys are patriarchs, you know. I the way I found you is I I heard this right here. Uh, That's what I heard. Yeah. Swishes and Doge. And that was like, that was Pimp. And Pimp had, had a protege. His name is Steve B. Lowe. That's how I found you right there. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, 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 yeah. like, it's not fun as it used to be when Pimp, Pimp go. So a lot, of people, a lot of us that was really, really heavy with so, if you notice this, like. For was he, for, so is he right? Did you just, did you stop because it wasn't fun no more? I mean, it, 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 you just. Side, I wasn't gonna deal with it no more after after Pimp C left. Man, it was it was a combination of a lot of things because, um, I had uh you know after after Pimp died, um, you know I was still still heavy in the music and still wanted to do it, but it really wasn't fun anymore, and I didn't realize that it wasn't fun anymore until a little while after you know he was gone yeah you know what i'm saying because uh you know bun and i did manage to uh to uh uh put together uh the trilogy album along yeah. with you know uh, some, uh, some other great producers and yeah. you know artists and things like that you know after pimp was gone um but after we did that and uh 
I wasn't working on anything much after that. And then it just, you know, I was, I was getting, I was getting a little older, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And my taste in music was changing. So I really wasn't hearing anything that inspired me because I, I feel like, you know, if you're going to work on a particular type of music, you have to be a fan of it as well. So you, when you hear things, you know, like, oh, okay. You know, I'm, I'm loving that. And I, I just wasn't hearing anything that I was loving anymore. And my taste in music was changing. Uh, my priorities and my life was changing. So it, it, it just, you know, and then on top of that, you know, not, not working with pimp. Yeah. Uh, and it just kind of, it is, it wasn't like I just sat up one day and just said, you know what? I'm, I'm just not going to do this anymore. Yeah. It one day not working on music turned into two. Yeah. Two days turned into three. Yeah. You know? And you didn't miss it. So that's the and that, that's thing. Yeah, that's what it was. And I, I really wasn't missing it. And I, you know, when you, when you working on the music, you know, don't get me wrong. I love working on music, but it's a, it's a very taxing uh, activity. Um, Many long hours. A lot of long hours. Mm. A lot of long hours and a, and a lot of... Uh, a lot of it's a, it's a after a while it becomes a mental strain wow because and do you have a family like wife kids no okay no because i was trying to see you know because you need time for that right so i was trying to see how much time you right had. now one thing I, I was trying to do was put myself in a position so i could you know maybe give myself a family okay you know so to be real i mean that music thing it don't always pay the bills yeah, yeah you know so i'm like okay well you know and, and that's and crazy you said that because a lot of people make you feel like music industry oh you getting paid no no i think that's a persona they have to portray because you fake it till you make it and you want people to look up to you yeah. for the moves that you're making but i always i i've taken a different outlook on that now that i've begin to venture into all my interviews and i feel like but i understand that, but you put fool all these up, young kids who are it, looking but, up yeah to but want to do that yeah but that's their I mean? hustle too so they're putting money up for their brand and and they're enjoying it when they're doing it yeah so i can't say that they're not bosses because when you put the money up you're a boss yeah and now you say well that's not real they don't really have it like that yeah but they done it you see what I'm yeah <laughs> so i can't disrespect it yeah, no, I mean, it's... Um, you see, they invest Yeah, yeah. And, you know, a lot of them, you know, a lot of them have money already. And yeah. a lot of them have people with money behind them. That's so they right. can they can keep up that lifestyle. Correct. And then, you know, you got some people that feel like um, if they can't do music, then they just can't do nothing, nothing else. else. And mm -hmm. I, I, I ain't never been like that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I, I pretty much, through my whole music career, I have pretty much held down a nine to five at one point or another there were times when you know i i received received some nice little music checks and i was like okay well i can do this full time. <laughs> but you living off that money you know what i'm saying and then it start getting low I'm like well now what i'm gonna do now i ain't getting no big checks no more so it's like go give me a job you know what wow. I'm saying? go nine to five it out and you know just I, just keep working on music keep pressing on you know, I get it. Yeah. So with all the sorry, baby, with, it, with all the years that you've been in the music industry, do you ever try to give back to someone who is upcoming? The to try to teach them. You yeah. Know, yeah. Things that I've, you I've had a lot of people that you know that that have met me and they, they they've had kids or cousins or relatives that uh, want to get in the business, and I tell them, you know, I, I, whether it's teaching them how to work the, the the equipment, or you know, giving them whatever knowledge I do have of, of, of the music or the business side, you know, I give that to them too. Mm -hmm. uh, because I know, I know how it is to dream. I ain't never going to tell nobody not to, you know, not to go chase their dreams. I ain't, I'm, I'm never going to tell a kid that I'm never going to tell anybody that, you know what I'm saying? Because I know what that hunger feels like. Yeah. I know what it's like to, to, to dream about something and want to go get it, you know? And, you know, I, I just, I don't, I don't feel like it's it's my right to tell them that you know it's just a dream because it's possible it's possible for everybody and it's it's not going to turn out the same way that it turns out for everybody i mean look at all of the the football players that 
are talented enough to go to the NFL, but just don't make it because you can only put so many people on a team. On a team. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, I'm pretty sure there's so many cats out there that never made it to the NFL that's way, way more talented than, than some of the guys in, there. in the NFL, mm-hmm. but just don't make it because the odds just didn't work in their favor. Yep. With whatever reason that is. You know what I'm saying? I agree. Yeah, so that that was something that, you know, I kind of had to realize about the music business and like, you know what, if if music don't work out for me, it ain't the end of my life. Wow. Because I believe in God and I know he going to have hey. me. He going to have me either way it go. He, it, wherever it. I end up is where, where he, he led, led me. Exactly. So I just, I let him lead me. Hey, you know man. what I'm saying? Hey, man, so let's get into it, man. So Swishes and Doja, like, like, the, did you help him help with that whole uh, Underground Kings project, the whole thing? No, I don't. I only worked like on two songs. Two songs? Which yeah. songs was it? It was Swishes and Doja and uh, Like That Remix. Like that, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was. Yeah, you know, you like. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's, 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 it's a version that Lil John did, and then the other version is the one that I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so how, did you, how did you end up in the situation even dealing with UGK? Well, I met them through Mel from Trill Entertainment. Okay. Um, you had two cats that was over Trill Entertainment, which was uh, Mel and another cat named Turk. Okay. And uh, I knew Mel first, uh, a partner of mine named uh, Kurt B. Shout out to my boy, Kurt B. Um, he introduced me to Mel. And uh, Mel at the time they from was- from Louisiana. Um, Mel and yeah, Turk. They're yeah. from Baton Rouge. Yeah, Baton Rouge. That's when he, he dealt with Boosie. Right. Right. That was that was that t- during that time period. Right. That that's how I know they linked. Yeah. So you met him. How did you meet those guys? I met them through Kurt because Kurt was another friend of mine. Because I went to Southern University. Okay. In Baton Got Rouge. It. Got it. And I met a partner of mine. His name was Kurt B. Uh, and he's just he's one of those type of cats, man. They can just talk to anybody. Yeah. You know he you know he knows damn near everybody in Baton Rouge, and he you know he he uh he knew that I did music. You know what I'm saying? He was one of my biggest supporters. You know, while I was down there in Baton hey. Rouge, you know what I'm saying? Me and him became real cool, real oh. tight. Matter of fact, I'm I'm his daughter's uh, God godfather. Father. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. But anyway, he introduced me to uh, to Mel because Mel, at the time, was just starting up in the music business. And he, he had another artist named uh, Smitty, Smitty the Pimp, you used okay. to call him back then. And uh, he was looking for somebody to do music. So that's how we got connected. And then... Uh, uh, as time went on, Mel started dealing with Boosie. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And then um, I did I did some music for Boosie, and then I came back to Dallas, and then... When, when was I, that you did the music for Boosie? Oh, that was back in... That when he first started out? No, he had already did the, the album with uh, CeeLo. Okay. Um, he did that album already. That, he was in that transition from leaving that situation and then going into a situation with Mel. Okay. And that's when I came in, and I want to say, oh, man, my memory is just terrible. <laughs> I want to say that had to be about 98, 99, okay. something like okay. that. And whenever he was transitioning into that situation from, from CeeLo to Mel, that's when I came in, and um, I worked on a, some some of the earlier stuff he did with Trill Entertainment. Yeah. And then uh, I came back to Dallas for a little while, and then while I was in Dallas, that's when uh, Mel and, and – got with Turk and then I, they started they basically started Trill Entertainment mm-hmm. and then they got with uh, uh, they got with Mouse they found Mouse down there he's Mouse from Baton Rouge right. and yeah. you know he, he, he ended up you know making some really mm-hmm. really big songs for him so that's kind of you know he kind of got in that position right there you know and then um, uh, but I went all off on a, on another it's thing it's all good but, I, I'm just I'm, but, I'm, I'm, uh, you gonna get back to it yeah 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 <laughs> uh, but that's how I met Pimp. Was Pimp, through, yeah, through Mel. It was through Mel because Mel and Pimp was tight. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I think uh, Mel had stayed out in Houston for a while, and then I, I think they met some kind of way, him and Pimp, and then they became tight. And uh, they started talking about starting Trill and Entertainment together. Trill Entertainment, yeah. man. Yeah. So how, did, how was that meeting? How was it meeting Pimp? Just He was just a cool person like he was when, yeah, he, man. when he met other people, yeah, right? I was, I was thinking about that the other day. It was funny because... I was like, man, I remember the day I met Pimp and Bun, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. At the time, Mel had this house, you know, where they was doing all the music at. It was really just like a house where everybody kind of hung out at. And uh, I I used to go over there, all my, my equipment and stuff set up over there, and I was you know, just making beats all day, just 
He had these big old 15 inch Sir and Vegas that I used to love. Well, I love them Sir and Vegas. Them always used to hit with the orange. Was it that oh, yeah, orange? They had that orange <laughs> rim on them. Yeah. Yeah. Who <laughs> went on, and, um, man? Uh, he told me Pimp and Bone was coming over one day. And um, I, I just remember being in that room all day. I'm like, I'm going to have to make me something hard. I so got when to they, have it. When yeah, they, I'm going to let them when they, boys when they have come it. In there, when they come in there, they going to hit. They going to. They, Gonna have to mess around with me, you know what I'm saying? Like they not they not walking up out of here without no music. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. that's just all. And I just had my mind made up. Yes, sir. So I worked on some beats all day, and I came up with some some really hot stuff, bangers. man. Yeah, it was some it was some bangers, man. So they finally showed up because you know they they nocturnal creatures, man. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They hang out all night. So I think it was like 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. They they showed up over Mail House, and uh. They came in the room when I was working on some tracks, man, and they were like, yeah, man, you know, play some, play something for me. So I hit that start button, man, and they got that stank face. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> they both looked at each other. They were like. <laughs> he got it. He got yeah, it. Yeah, that, that was a good feeling, though, man. Man, it had to be, man. That was a good feeling, you know, to, to be able to meet those cats like that, and I had been looking up to them for so long, you know what I'm saying? And I already kind of felt like, you know, when it came to the music part, you know, me and Pimp, I, I actually feel like me and Pimp were like um, musical kindred souls, you know wow. what I'm saying? Because it's so funny, um, when I first started working on music, you know, I was just just getting into that that whole, um, damn, am I doing it right? Yeah, yeah. You know, am I, am I using the right sounds? Uh -huh. Am I using the right samples? You know what I'm saying? So at the time, I was working on this track with an Isley Brothers sample. Yeah, yeah, and I had it rolling, and I was sitting there listening to it, and I, you know, I was, I just kind of learned how to sample and sequencing and getting all the drums and stuff together, and I was like, oh, man, I wonder if that's jamming. I know I like it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I wonder if it's jamming to somebody else. And then probably about a week after I did that beat, man, I'm riding in my car listening to the radio. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's, 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 I must be it. doing it right. I they must be it. doing it right. It, it was Pimp Yeah, it was them. I said, I must be doing it right. That, that, that was that, uh, right. Which, which song was that? Uh, that it, that one, Tell Me Something some Good. good. Yeah. Tell, Tell Me Something some good. good. That was the first one I heard. How old was you when you heard that? Man, I must have been about, what, 15, 16? 15, 16. Me, yeah. I was a little bit older. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 49. For, yeah, we, I'm one year older than you. So, yeah, yeah. I was at the da I Dangerfield track meet. I'll never forget that day, man, when I yeah. heard that song. Just like you just explained it. Yeah. I told I tell you that all the time, mm -hmm. don't I? When yeah. I heard that song, yeah. I knew I knew they was cold. Yeah. I ain't had to I had to find that music. Yeah. That uh what what too hard to swallow? What what that what what album was that? Oh man. That had to be. I think too hard to swallow. That was too hard that that was uh was the second one. That was the first one. It had to be. Man, don't make me lie. Boy, I'm telling you, that was it. You know me. I, I'm just telling you, that was it, man. I, yeah. I, I just know when it when it came out. No, that wasn't it. You right? Because it had Tim and some good pocket full of stone. Uh, do, do, yeah, B O B B U N B. I just remember the songs. Yeah, I know yeah. what order they was in. You know yeah. what I mean? That's yeah. when you really. So you you had made that made that just listen to that beat and you was thinking that's a hard beat. Yeah, I'd like I used that sample. That sample. Yeah, and I was like, man, I wanted this was a good choice of sample. And then when I heard when I heard that song on the radio and I saw that you know he used it. And everybody was loving it. And I was like, okay, I must be doing something right. Like I must be choosing the right samples. I must have I must have that sound or or at least know of that sound that, was that it. other people want. You too know hard to saying? swallow. Yeah, it was too hard to swallow. Yeah, okay. yeah, that was yeah. it. I just know that thing went hard, man. Me and my partner, shout out that boy Low D's. We argue all the time about who the hardest out of uh Eight ball MJG and uh, UGK. That, oh, uh, oh, me oh. and Low D's. That's Yellow B's is uh, yeah, manager. Yeah, I, I know him. I uh, we go, we back. go, yeah. we go back and forth. I call him, yeah. man. You crazy, man. Yeah. <laughs> now, but he got songs with with. I see. I don't remember you saying that because you got songs with them mm -hmm. niggas. Yeah. <laughs> he like, nah, they the hardest. He, I'm like, whatever, man. <laughs> you never give me to say that. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love them both, man. But me it, too. It, I love it, both of them. UGK all day. I gotta say UGK because I remember where I was at, like you were saying earlier, and I just know the feeling. And I got when I heard that. Now uh, that one laid down from eight ball. I remember that where I was oh, at yeah. when I, that, that yeah. thing went hard, man. Yeah, yeah. So and Mr. Big, Mr. Mr. Big, Mr. Big, Mr. Big, man. Yeah, when when they got with that dude T Mix, man. 
Yeah, yeah, they yeah, yeah. Production when they stepped that production up, it was man. On. They got down in Houston and went with Suave House. Suave man. House, man. I remember being at Southern, man, listening to them. I albums. always think about Mr. Mike, man. Oh, yeah, Mr. Mike, was cold <laughs> boy, too, went bro. hard, man. Yeah, I always hard. ask people. Then I asked. I think I asked Pud. Pud said he was big Pud. Big Pub said he was still down there. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I'm looking for that cat. I'm trying to find uh, yeah. Mr. I'm gonna find. I've him. seen. I've seen some. Uh, see, he. I don't know if they were recent, but I saw him in some some interviews. Really? Done I gotta look him up. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna, two years, yeah. Cause we went to Houston and done some, and yeah. and, and I'm gonna next time I go back. Fine. Yeah, I'm yeah, gonna that, get it. He was cold, bro. I loved it, he man. Was cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I think when you was talking, it's like you, Mister Lee, uh, KLC that was on. Who else? Uh, he's a Leo. I'm 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 going through everybody. Uh, uh Ronnie Ronnie Spencer was just on here. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going through everybody just talking about pimp. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I just love the fact that God lined everything up for me, man. That's what this show then became. Something like yeah. like when you really think about it, my yeah. people are centered out. I gotta get bun. I'm gonna get him. I ain't even tripping. I know God God will put him right there in that, that seat. Is. But that <laughs> but the thing I can say is, man, that all of these people was just surrounding that that the career. So what was what was Give me a story between you and Pimp, something that you remember that stuck out to you that that happened with you and him. Oh man, it something was, that was uh, something that just something that nobody would know. I don't know because like me and Pimp, like I I went down and stayed in his house and it when he was living in Atlanta, like the whole summer. I think that was back in oh man, I want to say ninety eight. I remember when he was living like, down there. Yeah. Yeah, and I just I went down there and pretty much locked myself in his basement. Wow! And barely came came up for air. Like he would be upstairs, I'd be down in the basement. And they they go out and party and stuff like that. And I'd be down in the basement working on tracks, man. Wow! But one 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 thing that really really uh, stood out in my mind we uh, we never really we never really hung out one on one until this particular time, and uh, I was in Dallas. And he was in Houston. This was not long uh, after he had gotten released out of prison. Okay. And um, he's like, man, you know, I'm just chilling this weekend. You ought to come down, you know, holler at me. So I went down there. And it was really, man, the whole weekend, it was just me and him. He was wow. living at the, you know, the high-rise apartment down there in Houston okay. over there by the, uh, by the mall. And um, we just hung out, man. We just That's hung cool. out. Like, we hung out in his apartment. You didn't really even work on no music. Really? Like no he music. Was, yeah, he was just like taking a bunch of business calls, you know, trying to, you know, handle some things. And we go out, you know, in the evening and just ride around. That you sticks know out because yeah. he was just focused on yeah. just hanging out. Yeah, it, it wasn't even on no it wasn't even on no music thing. It wasn't even on no business thing. It was just, you know what I'm saying? Because we we I was working with him before he got locked up and then, you know, he pretty much he went when he went and got locked up, you know, that kind of just things came at a standstill. Yeah. Man, I and, uh, missed him during that time. Oh man, we all did. Man, that tarot unit. Did. I know he's on tarot unit. Yeah. I, I I was keeping up with whatever was going on. Yeah. Yeah, that's when you're yeah. fanning out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, man, I can't yeah. do I can't do this, man. Yeah. We gotta have some of that. Cause when you hear him with the songs, he stick out in every song from when he was with Master P and him doing songs. Oh yeah. Whoever he was on that song, he gonna kill that whole thing. Yeah. I don't care what nobody say. <laughs> like oh, yeah. was, he had that golden voice, man. Yeah. And his delivery was was like like no other man. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. So with, with, how did how was this process? Because I know Kale said he was like a genius when it comes to the music. Yeah. How was this process to though to when you seen him make music? He just knew what he wanted, man. Yeah. He knew what he wanted, like, and he was quick too. Um, you could hear him like I I remember when I was living living with him in Atlanta. You can hear him like he'd be humming things, you know, in his head, and he he go right there and go work on it. You know what I'm saying? Like he'll go because so, he had his his equipment set up, uh, you know, upstairs, and then mine was set up downstairs. Downstairs. Wow. Yeah, and I remember uh, he always say, "Hey, man, you know, I, I, you ain't got nothing like this right here. You ain't no." Nah, it wasn't never like that. It wasn't never like <laughs> never that. Like that. Nah, it, it was y'all just like, making music together. Yeah, like I'd be downstairs. He said you was work. like his protege or something. Yeah. That's what Bond said. Yeah, because. Cause really, man, I, cause I had been making music before I I met him. Okay. But like he knew that my my drums could use some work. Okay. So he introduced me to the Roland R8. Okay. Which was a drum machine that he was using, and people used to tell me all the time. He said, "Man, that dude must really like you, man." Cause I ain't never seen him show nobody how to work that drum machine. Wow. And uh, yeah, so he showed me how to work that drum machine. So then I started uh incorporating the sounds from that drum machine into my music, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And 
was just really getting familiar with it. Man. Uh, but yeah, I remember one time, man, he was working on uh, uh, the beat to uh, Chopping Blades. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, <laughs> I was downstairs and I could hear the beat going, don't, don't, don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't, don't. don't, don't. <laughs> yeah, that bitch was jamming, boy. I was like, ooh. I said, yeah, he got him one. Kill it. So later on that day, uh, the power went out. He was working on the beat, and back then, you know, you got the ASR-10, and uh, the, I don't think he was working on the MPC back then. No, he was working on the the, the uh, R8 and the uh, ASR-10, and he was working on the beat, working on the beat, and he had it, he had it going. Had that whole going. And the, and the power went man, out. Man, he rapped that whole oh, The power went out. He <laughs> lost that beat. What? Yeah, he lost the beat, and all I could hear him upstairs, he was like, <laughs> he was like, fuck. He had to make that one again, didn't he? He had to start it all over again. He went bro. back and got it, didn't yeah. he? It was in yeah, that era. It sounded just the same, same. as he had. Yeah, wow. just the same as he had it before. Man, yeah. I, that had to be because I would have yeah. hated not to get that one. Yeah. Boy, that one right there. Yeah, that's a classic. Woo, bro. you hit the club with them boys kicking yeah. back. You know? yeah. <laughs> that Laying thing, in the shade. Woo, that <laughs> thing was a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I already know it was, man. Yeah. So when you think about because I think one of his sons is locked up right now. Um I, I just I just found found it out. I yeah, was me and he, the, I've been I'm, I'm, interview uh with, with his mom and, and he's a Leo and yeah. she was saying how he was I said what you know, some of the things that she was saying, how you know, everybody, you know, keeping them in good spirits. I'm like, what is she talking about? Yeah. And then I put two and two together. I said, Well, he must be he must be incarcerated. And yeah. I didn't I didn't know that. So did any of his kids ever come around when you was hanging out with him or staying with him? Yeah, Chatty Boo. Chatty Boo was staying with him at the time. Wow. Uh, which which is his, his first son, his oldest son. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, I, it's got to be hard for those guys, man, because uh, of live, being under such a shadow. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. my kids already, you know, they. I'm pretty sure I, my shadow ain't that bad. <laughs> but when you uh, under a shadow like that. A legend like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. He a legend and, and so much expectation under that. That have to be something else, bro. Yeah. People don't yeah. think about it. But anytime you see yeah. something like that going on, I always think about it. I'm like, that's yeah. a big, that's a that that's a big shadow to be under. Yeah. And, and yeah. people looking at you and they expecting or wondering or thinking. And then you insecure. Yeah, because you you insecure. You you're young, you're young, and you trying to get to know who yourself is. That's right. Just because you know that's who your father is doesn't necessarily mean that that's who you are. That's who you're going to be. Mm -hmm. And you know now you're not only trying to get to know who you are as as your own person. You got everybody saying who your dad was and what your dad did and how he was, and you know so you, that kind of gets in the way of you finding your own you know, identity. And then you yeah. start feeling like you have, you have to live up to that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But you know, I don't, I don't, I haven't seen uh, either of his children yeah. in a while. So I don't know if that's the kind of mindset. No, no, I'm just thinking of how have. I would. Oh yeah, absolutely. How I would think if I was in that situation. Oh yeah. Because I'm you sure don't know what people they have expect. To, yeah. You know, yeah, I'm sure it's something that they have to deal with. Yeah. You know? It you know? have to be, man. So, so far as a uh, bun, what, what's some situation you and bun and Benny and did you, cause you, Pimp was the guy that did the beats, and you a mute, you a beat producing, you know, sound, yeah. ear for the sound type dude. So when it came to you and Bun, did you ever have to process the music right there on the spot with Bun to make any mu make any other songs that y'all y'all did? Not really. Like um, it was, we just had the I just had the time to work on the music, and then you know I would present it to Bun, you know, and if he liked it, you know, he liked it. Uh, then he worked with it. It really wasn't a, like when we worked on Trill OG, uh, there was some on the spot uh, song making or producing in the studio, but but not much. Like a lot of it, like we would go, like I would present beats to him, like on a CD, he'd listen to them. He'd like, yeah, I want to mess with that. And then we'd go to the studio and record them. We'd work on that, record it at the studio. And then, you know, once we, you know, part ways at the end of the day, I'll go home and go work on some more stuff yeah. and then present it to him the next day or whenever I had it ready. Wow. So it really wasn't like any, uh, you know, working on the stuff, you know, while we was both there. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I kind of worked better. By yourself? By myself anyway. Okay. Yeah, yeah switches and dozers. So how, how did you process that? Uh, man, that was, um, I think the, one of the biggest qualities of that song is, is the sample that's in it. 
Man, that thing sound them guitars and stuff, man, yeah. is a beast. Yeah. Do you hear me? Mm-hmm. I mean, the song is I, I, where did how did you do it? How was it? I, I can ask you because you know how yeah. all how yeah, it came well, together. It was I, you know, and I, I love I love how it all came together because it was just like one of those like magical type of type yeah. of situations. I was riding with my cousin Greg in in his car, and he was listening to this. Um, he had this like exotic cold mix CD or something that he was listening to. And one of the one of the songs on it was this uh, uh, song called "Step to You" by Step Rito, who is a Zydeco artist. Okay. And I was listening to it, and I, I love the melody in the song. I was like, and I asked him who it was. He said, "Yeah, man, that's Step Rito." I said, "Man, you got to give me a copy of that CD, man. Mm-hmm. I think I want to sample that." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So then he burned me a copy of the CD. I took it home, and um, uh, just really just started messing with the sample, man. And I. <laughs> It, I wanted to use another part of the song, but one day when I was working on the song or when I was making the track, earlier that day, this chick I was dating at the time, it broke up with me. Wow. And it hurt me. And that makes for better music. Yeah, it hurt me. She hurt me. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna sit here on the mic and do it like I ain't <laughs> never been hurt. hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't and feel good. It hurt right here. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You can't get away yeah. from that old stuff. Yeah, okay, yeah. Boy. And yeah, I was sick. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> that part, the part that I sampled, the part that I ended up using, because I couldn't. I had another part that I was using, but I couldn't get the chop just right. Yeah, the sample chop, I couldn't get it right. So I found another part to use. I said, let me just use this in the meantime. And when when I heard it, it when I heard that particular part, it it just called me because it kind of sounded painful. Yeah. It sounded painful. You know what I'm saying? And it, it just made me sit there and like, <laughs> them boys, them you know boys. what I'm saying? Yeah. It was kind of like a release. It kind of felt like a release almost. Yeah. And then I, I'd actually just put it on a CD and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go back to it. I'm going, I'm going to use the part that I, I wanted to use, but I ended up sending the CD off and it was really, it really was a song because Pimp said, man, put me about seven, to eight beats on a CD and send it to me. So I had all these other beats that I was like, oh, yeah, he's going to love these. He's going to love these. And it was like seven songs and I needed one more track to put on there. And Swishes and Doja was that, that was one. the last one. It was the last one. I was like, you know, that it's tight, but I just I can't I really can't hear UGK on it. On it. You know what I'm saying? And he hit you back. He hit me back. <laughs> like, like this the one. Man, that man, that last one you got on that motherfucker, <laughs> man, man, that <laughs> hard, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the one they ended up using, man. Yeah, that's so the one they ended up using. When you see these guys come out like that, man, and they do what they do, uh, as far as the way the finishing touch when they come lyrically on it, man, what do you be thinking? Or what did you think at the time? You know? When I man, you see what I'm saying? I, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. When I when I heard it, man, I was like, "That's why I'm the producer and they the rapper." D boy, you know go hard. And and I was like, man, I was like, when they rapped on it, and I heard it, I was like, I was like, man, you got a lot to learn because you didn't even really hear them cats on that track, and here right. they are ripping it hard. And it, it was at that moment in time, man, where I was like, man. Cause I used to, what I used to do when I used to present beats to artists, I used to put like tracks on there that I think they'll sound good on. And right there is when I learned just put everything on there, on there, cause you you just don't know what somebody else is, you know what I'm saying? It's, cause that's just like me speaking for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't never know what they're gonna do with what right. you give them. Right. So I get it. You can't you can't speak for nobody else and what they're gonna do. You just gotta put put it out there. Put it out there. Give it to them and. See what they come back they with. Do what it do. Yeah, because so you never know what's going through somebody here. Your top three artists of all time. I always ask that question. Top three artists of all, any genre. Damn. Just three. <laughs> Look how she didn't say nothing this time. That's funny to me. You must be chilling. I purposely did that. Really? <laughs> My wife always say something. She's like, <laughs> any genre, because she don't want it just to be rap. But she yeah. didn't say nothing it's tonight. your preference. Yeah. Number one. <laughs> she did say it's your preference, right? Number one of all time. I'm gonna have to say Prince. Prince. We've gotten that a lot. Twenty seven instruments, Prince. Yeah. Number two. <laughs> Number two. Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder. 
Number three. Of all time. That third one but always get them, don't mm-hmm. it? Because it's so many. Man. Yeah, I know you like, it's I don't know. On the slide it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. So yeah. Yeah, that third will get everybody. <laughs> I'm going to have to go with Rakim. Rakim. Man, That's that boy. That's Rakim. Eric mm-hmm. being Rakim went hard, man. They, they changed it, bro. They changed the whole game. They changed it. Yeah, and, and I, him, I them, him. That's the first one. Yeah, them and um, them and LL, bro. Those yeah. those cats. LL did his thing, they man. Made dudes start rapping. Like I start. I don't know why I thought about Brenda got a big old butt when you said mm. LL. <laughs> that old that beat, you know, that beat was yeah. crazy, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite songs from LL was um, Jack the Ripper. Yeah, you like that one? That, that one, you know, not not necessarily because it was a Kumo D disc, but it's just just the way he. Man, I Just like the way he came on that song, bro. Man, I need love on. was a bad song because yeah. nobody expected him to sing nothing yeah, like that like, during that know, time. He 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 was like one of the first to 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 cross that to cross over you know that that whole yeah. that whole situation. Nobody mix, was doing that. Love with nobody rap. was doing that. Yeah, he yeah. was the first one. Mm-hmm. But like, he did he that head sprung too in the end when I took you to see him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That head sprung. Yeah, <laughs> he get rap, you. Bro. Yeah, that hey, he when he, hey, man, I love that. But that dude go hard. Yeah. Like, and he underrated too. Oh, very underrated. Underrated. I, mean, I remember, I remember uh, going to uh, Bruton. I, the first time I ever saw LL on anything was um, I don't know if you remember. Was, was you raised here? I've been around here a long time, bro. Bruton forty eight on Bruton. You remember that? No, was, I don't remember was, that. Well, I don't, I don't know that. what grocery store is there now, but it was on. It's in Bruton and Prairie, Prairie, Prairie Creek. Creek. Yeah, yeah, that's a. Uh, uh, it's a barbershop. It cuts right there now. No, no, that's over one. Bruton no, and Prairie Creek. That's Lake June. So Bruton would be over. Bruton is it? Bruton and Prairie, Prairie Creek. You sure? Yeah, Bruton and Prairie Prairie Creek because it's the same street that Samuel is on. Bruton and Perry Creek. That's right there. It was the same street that runs alongside Samuel. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, it used to be a Tom Thumb right there. And then down, further down the shopping center, at the end of the shopping center was a movie theater. They tore it down. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Yeah, they tore it down. But uh, Crush Groove, man. Yeah, Crush yeah. Groove. And, and I love that movie. walked in that room, bro. He killed it, didn't he? He said, oh, hold up, hold up, man. We, man, he went in, man. Over. He went in. And it was like, bop. Yeah, yeah, he hit that. Oh, it was and over. man, let me tell you, bro. When when that song dropped, man, that everybody in that that movie theater, man, was just it, it was in. a party, dog. I know it did. It was a party. Man. I love that whole. Yeah. It's funny, and I can say this to you, but like when you see rap come on the scene, you can see rap. We, I, I'm old enough to where I remember when rap started. Yeah, and and I remember when it was just R and B. You I, know, I feel very privileged to, to have seen that whole thing, right? To have watched. The, the the birth of a music that has changed this Hip-hop. world forever. For sure. Rap has changed this world forever. forever. You know what I'm saying? I it, agree with it 100%, yeah. man. That's something that, yeah. and, and it made a lot of entrepreneurs as well. A lot of, a lot entrepreneurs, of entrepreneurs, man. A lot of them. Absolutely. I think that helped our people, man. So um, when you, um, I, I, I'll ask you, I'm, I'm not going to hold you up too much longer. Um, when you think about uh, the music, man, What's it going to take to get you back into music so I can get some more music out, man? <laughs> That's what I need to know. He's retired. I don't want to hear that. You know what, man? I I really, you know, I I haven't just stopped it all together. We got to uh, find an artist. That's well, dope. We got to be a dope artist. Well, here's the thing. Um I've I've been working on stuff for myself. Okay. And I'm I'm stepping into the uh the Southern Soul Blues and the Zodiac. Get out of here. Um, yeah. And and what's what's been happening with me, man, is I've been I've got some stuff, some stuff I've been working on for myself cuz I'm a, I'm a, I've been working on it, writing it, producing it and recording it. Okay. Uh, cuz I can hold a tune. A okay. Bit. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been messing with so many different genres of music to the point to where I've been saying, "Well, you got to you got to make up your mind and choose one. One, yeah. And then I was like, well, why not just do all of them? So I, I just made it up in my mind to do the music that I like to listen to and the music that I like to hear and put it out there and just let the people 
People judge for themselves. Mm-hmm. I can't it's, wait it's to hear touch. it. Yeah. You going you gonna to come back on the show so, so we talk about it? Man. It'll be Gotta my have pleasure. Back when up. are you putting it out? I'm going to put it out by the summer. And so, so, so yeah, we'll Megan. be here and we're going to get to get you going to come back on. We do a little listening I, session. I, you'll be the first show I hear. That's bro. all I want to hear right you'll there, man. The first show Lord, I say the same. God, say the same. Yeah. We're right here doing it, man. Yeah. Releasing it right here. Just just talking about the process of the music right, again. Because yeah. I already yeah. know it's going to be dope, man. Because you're a dope dude, man. Appreciate it, man. I appreciate you for coming over here and blessing our platform, man. Yeah. I know you could have been a million places, but you're here with us tonight. Hey, man. Thanks for having no, me. No, thank, thank you so much for y'all. coming, man. Like yeah. I said, it's a blessing, man. You didn't. You don't even know, man. I just to hear those stories, man, and that's that's where I'm at with it. I just love to hear about what was going on with Pimp because I'm a big fan, fan of Pimp, you know. Yeah. Um, and my yeah. wife heard this ever since we started this thing. She got tired of it. Yeah. She gonna kick me it, out of here. It's so much to be told about <laughs> the cat, man. You know, he he touched a lot of people. Him and him and Bun. Him and Bun. Bun. And I, Bun. I don't. I, I don't play. But only thing with Pimp, you know, just those. That the beat making and uh, oh yeah, I mean, and he yeah. even said that Bun even oh, said absolutely, you yeah. know, he it just yeah, it was so much to him. But then at the end of the day, like Bun said, I just come in there and do my thing. You know what I'm saying? He already have it ready. Yeah, and and Bun was quick with it too. You oh, know, yeah. when it came to the when it come to the music, and look how he held Pimp C down during the time when he was absolutely. gone. I could go in on that absolutely. because he held him down. I ain't never seen no other artist holding no, you know, nobody down like that when absolutely. he was gone for about what four years. Yeah. Four years, yeah. right? And Bum was out here working, man. That yeah. free PMC thing was going down. Man, look, man. That held us on. I don't I don't care what nobody say, bro, because I know it's been a lot of things said as far as what their relationship was like. Yeah. But them dudes was each other's brothers, man. Man, you ain't got to tell me <laughs> that. Man, let me tell you something. I didn't been in a room with both of them without the other one for lengthy periods of time. And ain't now one of them ever said anything bad about the other one. In my presence, anyway. Already. You know what I'm saying? And I know for a fact, just by being around them cats, I know that Pimp would have went to war for Bun, and Bun would have went to war for Pimp. Man. And all that other stuff, I don't know about it. Don't even matter to me. But I know what they meant to each other. Or There's at least I feel like other. what they meant to each other. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's yeah. what matters to me. Well, every time, you know, when you look at someone passing away, you know, uh, it always is, you know, people have whatever thoughts or whatever. But Bun, to me, the, like I said, you see what he done. His yeah, work, absolutely. you can't deny it. Absolutely. You can't deny that he went in and, and, and basically, you know, that. like I say, it, it was it was an untimely demise, first of all. Yeah. But but the way he went in when he was in prison, I, I, it just sticks out to me. Nobody yeah. has ever done that, bro. Right. Held somebody down like that. Yeah. You know he and, and 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 everybody was riding his back too. He was keeping the music alive, man. Yeah. Every artist that was out during that John during that time, yeah. the Jeezys and all those people, Bun was somewhere ripping them apart with a with, with a verse. You remember? Bro. <laughs> he was killing Bro. them. Bro, he was hurting all of them, man. They, they knew it though. That, they respected him. He was he was on with uh, Cash Money and he was killing it. He was doing with Jeezy and he, he was, was killing it. Man, shout out to Bun, man. That's yeah. a that's a real one there. Yeah. But man, hey man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. See below, we love you, bro. Love y'all too. We man. love you, man, and you love always welcome to come here. If you call me and say, "E, uh, such and such need to come on there, some talent out there, or whatever the case may be, man." You can you got my number. You can hit me yes, up, sir. man. Yes, sir. For sure, man. I've enjoyed this thoroughly, man. Hey, man, man, you don't even yeah. know what it means to me to yeah. be here with you, bro. <laughs> right. For real, man. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Yes, sir. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk One Hundred and One. Oh yeah.